Hi, welcome to the iCampus Leadership Team Training on Bible Passage Analysis. And before we get started, I just want to say a quick thank you for those who are serving through iCampus Ministry. We are hearing stories every week of how your prayers uh, with our attenders on the weekend services, uh, for your care that you're giving them throughout the week, and for those of you that are praying uh, for our people who are submitting prayer requests throughout the week, you are making a huge difference, and God is using your efforts to transform lives. We get to hear the stories, and I just want to say thank you to all of you, and we want to make sure that we are feeding you as you are giving out to others, and we believe the good way to do that is through weekly prayer and Bible study, and that's why we're trying to incorporate weekly prayer and Bible study into our iCampus routine. So today we would like to train on Bible passage analysis. And what is this? Well, it's simply a Bible study method that will equip you to better gain an understanding of the passages that you are studying in preparation either to teach these passages or just simply to better understand them for your own personal enrichment. We believe that through routine Bible study that God will continue to transform your life and empower and equip, equip you to bring transformation to the lives of others. So let's take a look at this Bible study method for today. It's called Bible Passage Analysis or BPA for short. It's a very simple seven step process for taking a passage of scripture and putting it in an outline form that you're able to teach from. This will free you from being dependent on outside curriculums that you'll be able to develop a message directly from your reading of the scripture. It involves seven steps, and we're gonna go through those very quickly. Uh, step one, a summary. Step two, we're gonna divide the passage into sections. Step three, we're gonna develop a summary statement that describes the entire passage. Step four, we're gonna look at the text's purpose. Why is this passage of, in scripture? Step five, we're gonna develop a theological statement that is true for all people at all times. Step six is a teaching goal. If you were going to study this passage and you were going to teach it, what would be the main point that you would want your audience to learn? And finally, we're gonna develop in step seven some thought and action questions that take that leap from learning a passage for the knowledge that it offers and bringing it into application of how this can be applied to your thinking and to your actions that transform your lives in conformity to God's Word. So that's a quick overview and we're going to go quickly through these steps today and then in the weeks to come we'll spend more time, we'll slow down and just take maybe a step a week. But first let's look at what a summary is. Um, a summary is our first step and it includes a 10 to 20 item list of the content of the verses in a passage of scripture. Now in this list, which you're not, it's not necessary to do a complete sentence, you just want to include the pertinent information in these verses, including places that are mentioned, people, action, repeated words and phrases, and then pertinent information that is contained in the verse. You will first read the passage very thoroughly. The more time that you spend reading through the passage, the easier of these seven steps will come. So read the passage thoroughly. Always pray before you read a passage as well. You'd be surprised at how the Holy Spirit, when invited, will come in and just uh, crack open a passage for you. And then as you're reading, you may want to just make little marks in the little notations in the margin of your Bible, grouping the verses into a 10 to 20 itemized list. We want t at least 10, no more than 20 groupings of these verses. And then beside each grouping, you want to list keywords that describe the content of the verse. You want to use words that directly are in the passage and draw those now, draw those out. It will include names, places, items, action, repeated words, and phrases. Now keep in mind that this step is not supposed to be an interpretation. This is observing what the passage says and recording that in a summary form that will allow you to, just at a quick glance, get an overview of the passage. You don't need to use complete sentences, and again, warning, do not interpret during this step. Today we're going to take a look at 2 Timothy 3. So if you have your Bibles, open up your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 3. This is a great passage 
that will explain too why it's necessary for us to study scripture when we're serving the Lord because it is through the study of scripture that we're equipped for every good work. So let's begin this process of BPA by first reading through the passage. So let's begin with verse one. And Paul says, but realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come for men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power, avoid such men as these. For among them are those who enter into households and captivate weak women, weighed down with sins, led on by various impulses, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Just as Janes and Jambres opposed Moses, so these men also opposed the truth. Men of depraved mind, rejected in regard to the faith, but they will not make further progress, for their folly will be obvious to all, just as Janes and Jambres' folly was also. Now, you followed my teaching, conduct, purpose, faith, patience, love, perseverance, persecutions, and sufferings. Such as happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, and at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord rescued me. Indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, but evil men and impostors will proceed from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. You, however, continue in the things you have learned and become convinced of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the sacred writings, which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. So this is the passage that we're going to be looking at today, which really does explain why we need to be studying scripture in preparation for the good work that God has called us to do. So in order to do a summary of this passage, we're going to take these verses and we're going to group them. Now this is a short passage, only 17 verses, so we can uh, we don't have to group the verses together as much as we would a large, longer passage. Uh, so in this list, I have verse 1 by itself, and in its summary, realize, in last days, difficult times will come. And then I have in the second item, three verses group, verses 2 to 4. Men will be lovers of self, money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good. And then in verse five, holding form of godliness, have denied its power, avoid such men. Do you see how I'm just taking those key phrases? Not complete sentence, just lists. Um, then in verse six, enter into households, captivate weak women with sins, led by impulses. Verse seven, always learning, never come to knowledge of truth. Verse eight, Janes, Jambres opposed Moses. These men opposed truth, depraved, mind rejected. Verse 9, no further progress. Folly will be obvious. Janes, Jambres, folly was also. And then I have two verses, group 10 and 11. You'll kind of see that sometimes verses just naturally go together. And when they do, you want to group those together. Um, verses 10 and 11, you followed my teaching, conduct, purpose, faith, patience, love, perseverance, persecution, sufferings as happened at Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, persecutions endured, Lord rescued me. And then um, in verse 12, all who desire to live godly in Jesus will be persecuted. Verse 13, evil imposters will proceed to worse, deceiving, deceived. Those are key words just pulled from these verses. Verse 14, continue in things learned, convinced of, knowing from whom learned. Verse 15, from childhood, known sacred writings, give wisdom leads to salvation. Verse 16, all scripture inspired by God, profitable for teaching, reproof, correction, training, and righteousness. And then the last verse, verse 17, so that man of God adequate equipped for good work. You know, this is a shorter passage, so I could include 
more words. I didn't have to group the verses into so many um, items. And in that process, I was able to use more words from the verses, but it's not necessary. You're just looking for key words uh, to reflect the passage in the summary. Again, not you don't use your words to describe what the passage just says. At this point, you're just simply observing what it says and summarizing that with words taken from the passage. The second step then is to divide the summary into major sections. And these sections are the main divisions of the passage. You look at your summary and look for any breaks in action, themes, or movement in the passage at all. You want at least two and no more usually than four sections. At least two so that you have an outline. Um, no more than four because you're going to be teaching from this outline and once you get beyond four points you're going to lose your audience. And so two to four sections is a good rule of thumb. And each section should be expressed by a complete sentence that summarizes the content of each major section. So you want to look at your summary, look for a break, and then use a complete sentence to summarize that section. And again, in this step, warning, do not interpret. This is not a point where you're wanting to interpret what it says. Instead, you're wanting to, as closely as possible, restate what it says, often using as often as possible the words from the passage. Um, so when I look at 2 Timothy 3, I notice that the first nine verses are talking about what is going to happen in these last days when these godless men um, are uh, deceiving, themselves being deceived. It gives us a lot of things we can draw from here. Men, men will be lovers of self, money boastful, arrogant, uh, holding to a form of godliness, denying its power. And in verse 9, that section comes to completion. No further progress. Folly will be obvious. Janae's Jambrae's folly was also. Now notice in the beginning of verse 10, Paul now moves to directly um, direct his uh, comments to Timothy, giving Timothy as an example of what godliness looks like. He says to Timothy, you followed my teaching, conduct, purpose, faith, patience, love, perseverance, persecutions. And he goes on to describe what Timothy has done, which is in contrast with the godless men have done. And then he goes on to discuss scripture and the purpose of it, exhorting Timothy to continue in the sacred writings and what he has known since childhood. And so we have two major sections in this passage. And then we want to develop just a, a brief, complete sentence that describes each section. So in verses 1 to 9, we have, In the last days, difficult times will come when depraved men oppose the truth. That's just a, a summary of what Paul has discussed in those nine verses. In the second section, uh, a summary sentence could read, The godly will be persecuted, but they should continue in the knowledge of Scripture which is inspired by God, so to be equipped for every good work. Now, if you notice in these section some, um, sentences, I do use words that are drawn from the passage itself. There's not a lot of interpretation going on in these first two steps, or in the third step, which is our summary statement. Now, the summary statement is going to be a complete 10 to 15 word sentence that summarizes the content of the passage. And so with this, it's going to be a one short sentence that will describe the content of the entire passage. So you'll want to take, now we've looked at the summary, which is a broader um, summary, and we've gone down to the sections. And if you look at your sections, you should be able to now draw a single sentence that expresses what the entire passage uh, is speaking of. And so at this point, again, warning, do not do any interpretation. You are simply wanting to observe what is there and reflect that in your outline. So for 2 Timothy 3, we could say, while the depraved oppose truth, that would reflect the first nine verses. Secondly, the second section, the godly are to be equipped with knowledge of inspired scripture. That one sentence fairly represents the content of those 17 verses. And so in these first three steps, we've gone from our summary to our sections to our summary statement. 
and we've gone from broad to narrow. And now in verses or in steps four through seven, we're going to go from observing the passage to interpreting the passage. Or if you want to look at it a different way, uh, we're going to look at we're not teaching in those first three steps, but in steps four to seven, you're going to be developing more of what you would be teaching from this passage. You're going to be interpreting. You're going to be applying what it says in ways that would transform your life and the lives of those that you would be teaching. And so um, the next step is the text purpose. And what we're looking at in the text purpose statement is a statement that explains the purpose of the entire passage. This is an invitation to ask why. Why did God uh, divinely breathe this particular passage into existence? What does it contribute to the greater whole of Scripture, to uh, the book that it's written in? How does this contribute to Paul's letter to Timothy? And then how does that contribute to the New Testament or to the entire Bible? We want to just really ask why. What is the purpose of this particular passage? And so if we look at, again, 2 Timothy 3, we might say that Paul exhorts Timothy to continue in the teachings of inspired scripture. That first part of the sentence really is still just observation. It's a summary of what Paul is exhorting Timothy to do in order that, there's our purpose statement, in order that, every purpose statement should have that phrase, in order that, and here that follows is the purpose, he will not become deceived in the last difficult days when the depraved will oppose the truth. And that is a a statement that applies to us because we know of many people who can be described by those first nine verses. And so we would want to continue in the teachings of inspired scripture in order that we will not become deceived in the last difficult days which are upon us when there are the depraved who attempt to oppose the truth of God. And so that is our first four steps which prepare us then for the fifth step which is the theological statement. What the theological statement is is a timeless truth drawn from the passage that is true for all people at all times. And if we look um, at 2 Timothy 3, an example of this is that Paul teaches about what Scripture is. And in that statement in 2 Timothy 3.16, which is really the theme of this passage, he tells us that Scripture is inspired by God. And that is a truth that is true for all times, for all people. Scripture is inspired by God. It is the Word of God. God breathed His Word into existence. And so that is what Timothy uh, was learning from Paul in this passage. And then we move on to our teaching goal. Now, not all of you will be teaching. Uh, Many of you do because you are leaders who God has called and wants to equip through his word to transform the lives of others. When you're in conversations on the weekends, in your chats, you're often asked questions. And in those responses, you are teaching. And God equips you with the answers through the study of his word. Well, when we're looking at a passage, if you were to teach this passage, there would be a central truth that you would want your audience to learn. And so that C-A-T-L stands for cause audience to learn. And then what follows is what you desire for your audience or for yourself to learn from this passage. From 2 Timothy 3, we would want to learn that equipping for every good work comes through the study of inspired scripture. That's a good teaching goal for this passage um, because it's what Paul was teaching Timothy. Equipping for every good work comes through the study of inspired scripture. And then in our final step, we have the thought and action questions. And the thought and action questions are our attempt to apply this teaching in this passage to our lives and to the lives of those that we're teaching in ways that will transform their thinking and their actions, bringing them into submission to God's Word. We want to yield to the Holy Spirit as He conforms our lives and our thinking to the ways of God and to what God has revealed in His Word. And so these thought and action questions are drawn from each section, and these are questions that demand a response in either thought or action. 
uh, we want to take a look in this passage at our two sections and from each section develop quest questions that ask who or what, when, why, where. Avoid questions that can be answered by yes or no, because yes or no questions don't provoke as much thought. But when we ask people who, what, when, why, or where, they've got to, got to explain things. And so these are the types of questions we want to develop. Let's take a look at 2 Timothy 3. In the first section, our first section um, was, in the last days, difficult times will come when depraved men oppose the truth. So what are some thought and action questions that we can develop from this? Uh, some that I thought of was, how is God's truth being opposed today? How vulnerable are you and myself to the deception of those who oppose the truth? Are we equipped? We wouldn't ask that because that's a yes or no. How have you and I been equipped um, to, uh, to oppose those who are opposing the truth? and it is through the study of his word. Section two, our sentence was, the godly will be persecuted, but they should continue in the knowledge of scripture, which is inspired by God, so to be equipped for every good work. Those are verses 10 to 17. What are some good thought and action questions that we can develop from these verses? These are some that I came up with. You may have some that are completely different. I'd love to be able to hear yours. And maybe you'll be able to post those um, wherever we post this training. Um, but our, some that I drew from this passage is, When have you been persecuted for desiring godliness in Christ Jesus? What is your view concerning the inspiration of Scripture? How are you profiting from the study of Scripture? And for what good work are you being equipped uh, by Scripture? It really causes us to apply this passage to our own lives and whatever questions that you would ask yourself, um, those are the questions that other people want to ask of themselves as well. And so ask your questions um, so that those that you're teaching will be able to draw these truths from the passage. So these are our step, seven steps in Bible passage analysis, analysis BPA. Uh, we have step one, summaries. Step, step two, sections. Step three, summary statement. Then we move into the interpretation Step four, text purpose. Um, step five, theological statement. Step six, teaching goal. And step seven, thought and action questions. And just looking at this list, in those first three steps, you have S, 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 summary sections, summary statement. Think of your S, kind of if you're on those sections while you're doing this, remember if it starts with an S, stop teaching. Don't teach, don't interpret until you get to steps four through seven where you're invited then into that interaction with God's word where you're translating, interpreting, and implying to your lives. So the T you said for teach and first three stop teaching. All right, so we look at 2 Timothy 3. This is what my Bible passage analysis would look like. And once you have finished and completed your BPA on a passage, then you have a one page outline that you could take and you could teach any group and feel confident that what you are teaching is anchored in scripture. I don't know how many times you have heard someone who has attempted to teach a message that is kind of their own idea and then they'll use scripture to kind of pepper and to kind of support the message they want to teach. Um, but what we're trying to do here is to start with Scripture and draw our teaching from Scripture. And if you will be disciplined in going through these seven steps, then you'll have a one-page summary of your passages that you can take into a classroom and you can teach from with confidence that it has been drawn from Scripture, which is inspired by God. And there is power and authority any time that you're teaching a message that is anchored in God's Word. One of the things that stood out to me in this passage, and as you're going through this process, there will be scriptures that will jump out and really speak to you personally. And pay attention to that because that's the Holy Spirit's way of drawing your attention to a particular truths in a passage. For me, in 2 Timothy 3, it was in verses 16 and 17, where it says, All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. 
If you look at the word inspired, it says all scripture is inspired. In Greek, and you do not need to know Greek to be able to do BPA for sure, but I happen to be familiar a little bit with Greek and like to work with that. And this particular word really stood out to me, the word inspired. And in Greek, the word that is used is theopneustos. Theopneustos is a compound word in Greek that only appears one time in Scripture, and this is where it appears, and it is describing Scripture itself. And what theopneustos, in our English translations, it says inspired, but the actual word is a compound word. Theos is is God in Greek, and neustos would be breathe. And so what this passage is telling us is that all Scripture is God breathe. God has breathed His Word into existence for you and for me so that we can become equipped for every good work that He has called us to do. God has called you to a great work that He is doing in and through our efforts at iCampus. We are reaching people with the gospel of Christ, sharing in the ministry of God's Word. And it is God's desire for us to become better stewards of His Word. And I truly believe that if you and I will be disciplined in uh, preparing ourselves every week through the study of Scripture using this method, these simple seven steps, then we will become better stewards of God's Word and better equipped to go out for the good work that He has called us to do. So I hope that you will participate with us in this effort. Let's close up with a word of prayer. Father, we do love you and we do praise you for you are a God who makes yourself known and your truth known through scripture. Thank you for preserving your word through the ages that we can study it today and know that you are equipping us for the good work that you have called us to do and that you are protecting us from the deception that is so rapid in these last days. Father, I pray for your equipping for each one as we serve at iCampus, that you will help us to become better stewards of your word, that you will equip us for this good work, that you will empower us. And Father, that as we uh, study your word each week, that you will bless us through your word, that you'll conform our lives and our thinking and our actions to your truth. And Father, that through the changes that you are making in our life, that you will help us to bring about change in others. And Father, we just know that this is a work that always begins and ends with you. And it is to the praise of your glory that we are here and that we have the privilege of studying your word. And I pray that you will help us to make, make the best use of this opportunity that you have given us to study together. So we commit this project to you. We commit this ministry to you and our efforts to serve you through it. And we give you the glory, honor, and praise. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.